So, this is the second time I've approached this filly today. So you see, she came in to me. I stepped back, but see how she made that circle? Any horse that, any horse that I'm, I'm going to use the term that I, that I'm into, uh, this into me, <coughs> that, <coughs> pardon me, that's gone through my process with me, they wouldn't do that. It's not, <coughs> it's not appropriate for a horse that's on the same page as a person to make a circle around you like that. That, that, that's never a good thing. That, um, that's a defensive, that's a defensive uh, thing to do. You're too far away, the audio won't pick up. That, that, when a horse turns its back to you like that, that's a defensive posture. So, I'm just gonna keep there. That's much better. So, because she did that, I'm just gonna turn my back, take the pressure off. Taking the pressure off a horse, when the horse does something right, you have a couple of choices. You can say, oh goody, I got what I wanted, and keep going, which is, it's like, if you do uh, a, a really complicated report for a teacher or a boss or some project you're working on, and you really put your heart and soul into it, and you give it to the person and they they take and set it on their desk and say I'll look at it when I have time maybe in the next week or two it's kind of like that okay so if there's no there's no there's no payback there's no there's no warm fuzzy feeling it's like gee I'm glad I you know stayed up till three o'clock in the morning don't worry you can go ten minutes okay so so she didn't, she's not leaving, but if you can see in the camera, her head's turned away from me. And you can see from time to time a little bit of white around the edge of the eyeball. So rather than walking into her, which would chase her away, I'm going to step to her hip. You can see my hand. And you want to be as close as possible. I don't need the whole picture. I here's my there. Did you see that? Did you see how she came? Now, if somebody's going to say, "Yeah, but there's somebody walking out there," that doesn't matter. You know, when you're competing with these horses, I just take my light down a little bit there, so she's looking over there. Now you see the the mouth licking her lips. Now she's stepping, so I'm just going to step ahead of her eye, see if I can draw her into me. And now, if you look at that upper eyelid, and you watch it, you'll see that it changes from being hooded. There we go. It changes. Now she's got that upside down V. That's a sweet look. So that means that she's changed her mind. She's gone from treating me like I'm a predator, but even more than a predator, she's gone from treating me like a, a human that's just going to come and throw a halter on her, take her to the barn, put her in a grooming stall, do up the cross ties, throw a brush on her, and um, put a saddle on her and put her to work. I don't like that process. I don't like that process. So you saw her put her head down. So um, these are all really positive indicators. When this horse came a month ago, she's been here a month now? Hey, yeah. Um, she really was in a, in a knot. Now, I have a video that I posted earlier this past week, earlier in the week, this is Sunday. I'm just gonna see if she'll follow my hand and come down. There we go, a little bit. Um, uh, about uh, a young filly that hadn't had a halter on before and I started on the other side. 
I'll just undo this and go over there and repeat it. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm doing that. So I'm just rubbing here a little bit. Because if this horse was out in the boonies like a wild horse would be, and there is some wolves that thought they were going to take her down, there might be a particular specialist in the wolf pack that would come up and grab him by the throat. So the throat is one of those vital areas. While I'm here, I'm just going to show you, see that hood that's there? So that as we're going along here, you see the eye is getting softer. And it's important as a horse person, whether you're an amateur or uh, a, a professional, so I'm just going to rub her. This is what I was showing with the, the two-year-old. So, so that um, the first time that rope goes over their neck, you're not standing on the other side and they think, something's going to get you over here so they jump on you. If a horse jumps on you because of that, then see the wrinkles in this eye? Do you see that eye? That's just such a big deal. You're such a good girl. Yeah. You're trying so hard. Yeah. Yeah. And she did. Stay with me. Yeah. There's my come to me hand. There we go. Good girl. So now I can comfortably stand on her left side, throw this rope up over the right side, and and have pretty much 100% confidence that she's not going to jump on me. How's your time? Six minutes. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little feel on the halter here, and, and, and I have a feel here with my right hand, the back of my fingers. I'm going to ask her to bend, and now I'm going to ask her to come down light pressure. I'm just going to adjust this halter and you say well gosh you know I had I had one kid that I worked with and she had to ride seven or eight horses a day that are all green not very well handled and I think she said she had 11 or 12 minutes to go from catching them to being done and turn them back loose. She had 11 minutes to, to get that horse ride ready. You know, we're going to be here for three or four hours. And uh, and I'm not in that, if I'm in that big a hurry, then I'm not going to take this on. You know, it's not fair to the horse. Now, while we're here, she just did something. The nostrils are the other thing. And Andrea, if you could just zoom in here. I want you to just look at that left nostril. She just did something. I'm going to, I'm going to make it happen. She just had, see the wrinkles in the nostril right there? So she just, when I went to think, I didn't do it, but I was thinking about walking off. As I turned, I saw that wrinkle. Now, I, I can make an assumption. I'm just going to refocus her here on me. She's paying attention. I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to put a little feel on the side of her neck here. I'm, this is important stuff. I have a feel on the halter. I have a feel on her neck. I'm pressing on her neck right there. And I'm putting a little feel on the far side. This halter is And she's leaning there. against the hot wire. What's that? She's leaning against the hot wire. Why are you leaning against the hot wire? Not very much. Come here, baby. Okay. So, so a feel here. This would be where your rein would be if you were that way inclined as a rider. So then I'm going to give a little rub here, and I'm going to bend her. So, so now you just saw her lower her head and neck, but you also saw her flex through the back of her skull and the first and second cervical vertebrae. And you see the eye, the upper eye, and the nostril is fine. And the other thing I'm going to show you, I'm just going to turn her head a little sideways. She, when I came to her first thing, and I'll post that video first, is her bottom lip was, her, her chin was nice and full and soft. And, but right now, because my plan is to go into the indoor arena, 
and monkey around with her in there. So she's already got some expectations that she might be in trouble. So I want to help her and see there's a little bit of wrinkling right there. This is a little tighter than it was. And you see there's just the beginnings of a little stress wrinkle there. So I'm just going to ask her to bring her head down. But you'll notice this part of her jaw is closer to me. So I'm just going to put a little feel there. And by putting a feel here on the halter, it's actually affecting her on the right side of her head. So I'm just going to ask her to just tip her jaw towards me. The bottom, uh, at her axis of her skull, the perpendicular axis. And see, she didn't do it. What she did is she backed up. And now you see that stress. There you go. Now we're back up against the fence again. I'm just going to lead her away from that. See, she already is out in the arena and 